Hi everyone. So welcome to Sarthi Education second trial class. Today the trial class is of mathematics subject. So this is a, one of those subjects which is very easy for most. But when it is difficult or when it is confusing, it is very very confusing for everyone. Right? So in this video, we are what we are going to do is we are going to quickly discuss the basics of arithmetic. We are going to give you the feel how things and how education is done at Arthi Education. And also, we are going to introduce the concept of doubt support and the doubt package. So first of all, Arthi Education is a venture. It is an, is an education company, edu education technology company started by IIT graduates, IIT Delhi graduates. The idea is to be able to reach with education to every nook and corner of the country and not just big places with big education centers. All right. Secondly, the idea is to be able to provide personalized and quality education with experts of with experts in the industry to everyone 24/7 round the clock round the year. So this is uh, so we have what we have done in the past. Let me share some history about our company about our venture. So in the past, we have worked with our we have opened a center in a rural area in our tier three area uh, of India. Most of you may not be aware of it, but it is uh, it is a village near the city of Gorakhpur. Then after that, what we have been doing is we have been connecting with students in tier three cities mainly, specifically cities in UP, such as so we ran an NTSC course in some cities in in UP, for example, Bulandshahar, Khurja. Uh, some cities near in Ga some with some students in Ghazabad, Gorakhpur as well. Uh, this year only in the end of 2017, and we have got around four five selections out of the 15 or 15 students we picked, we handpicked for our sessions. Now this is the first time we have launched an online doubt support session, an online doubt support system. We did the pilot with the NTSC pr uh, program. Now we are taking it on a wider stage. So we have launched a class 10th CBSC Boards Examination Revision Package for Maths and Science subjects. You have the option to study only the Math subject. You have the option of studying only the Science subject, or you have the option of studying both of either of them or both of them. The ideal solution for everyone is to get the Maths plus Science package with 24/7 doubt support. But if you don't want an an, uh, an specific subject, or you think that the videos are the videos or material we are going to provide is enough for you, then you can take us take the package without the doubt support. Also, if you think maths is your maths is good, but you need help with science, you can take the science package separately, or vice versa. Also, if you think you know the concepts, all you need is an IIT Delhi graduate, is a very very good guy, very expert. Uh, very good expert to help you with the doubts round the clock for your boards exam for maths and science subjects you can just buy the doubt support package that is a pretty good deal because you can buy the doubt support package using this discount coupon on the website for only 150 rupees so for only 150 rupees you can get unlimited doubts 24 7 for whole of your boards exam for maths and science subjects and these doubts does not have to be limited to the CBSC course. If you want that you you know you need help with some some advanced topics, some advanced questions, you know maybe you are preparing for your coaching coaching entrances or something like that, we can help you with that as well. All right. So this discount coupon is not just valid for uh, you know doubt sessions. This discount uh, this coupon is valid site wide. You can use this. Discount coupon on our entire website and get 50% instant discount on anything. Also, if you sign up on the uh, on the Google form on the mail form we have in the link below, uh, that has that is the Google form link. All right, that is a short link for a form. I'm just mentioning it in the chat as well right now. If you sign up on this link, you can get exclusive high discount coupons. So the high discount coupons will obviously be above fifty percent, can be up to anything up to seventy five to eighty percent. Again, these coupons will be valid for one day, but will be valid side wide. You can use them unlimited times 
with your so registered email address you know if you want to buy for your friends or something like that also in the form you will see a referral form, a column if some if you are referred by some friend if you mention their name and they are registered on our website they will get 10% discount additional discount as well as you as paytm cashback now if you have already signed up you can get your friends to sign up through this using the referral and you will you and your friends both will get additional discount right so you can check out the website you can check out the form we are starting in 2 minutes after So let's start the session. All right. So this information is available in the description of the video as well. This 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 information is also available on our website sarthiyeducation.com. All right. If you have any doubt anything regarding it, you can connect us with on the email address or even the mobile number mentioned on our website. All right. Let's start this session. So first of all, what is AP? You know. what are the basics of ap why ap is uh, considered a, an important topic so we look for patterns everywhere there are patterns in the nature there are patterns in which occur in our daily life for example let's say a fr- we know a person who whose name is mohit mohit applied for a job and got selected he has been offered a job with a starting monthly salary of rupees 8000 and he will be offered an annual increment of rupees 500 every year in his salary so if i know that the basic salary was 8000 
and 500 was being incremented for the second year the salary will be 8500 now on the basis of all the information i have i can even predict the salary for third year as 9000 right so there was a constant increment the salary of mohit similarly there is another pattern let's say there are discs lying vertically right in the first stack there are two discs in the second stack there are five discs the third stack there are eight discs in the fourth stack there are 11 discs and in the fifth stack there are 14 discs can you see the pattern so every time i'm moving on a next stack i have a change of plus 3 right that means in the first stack i had 2 plus 3 5 in the second stack plus 3 8 in the third stack plus 3 11 in the fourth stack plus 3 14 in the fifth stack. this is the basic definition of an ap let's consider more series so there is a set of numbers 1 2 3 4 all right here when i add plus 1 to the first number i get second number then i again add plus 1 to the third second number third, second number i get the third number then i add plus 1 to the third number and i get my fourth right on the basis of this information if i want to predict the next number i can just say that the next number will be 5 Let's see the second series. In this series, if I subtract 30 from the first number, I get the second number. If I subtract 30 again from the second number, I get the fourth, third number. And if I subtract 30 again, I get the fourth number. Again, similarly to the first series, on the basis of this information, I can predict the fifth number as 10 minus 30 is equal to minus 20. So this is the basic definition of an AP. So AP is a series in which each two consequential numbers, each two sequential numbers have a fixed difference between them. The difference can be positive, the difference can be negative, but the difference is of a fixed value. Alright? Let's see the fourth number. So, 3, 3, 3. Again, this seems like a, you know, a normal number P represented unlimited times. But, but this can also be said to be an AP. Why? Because every two sequential numbers, the first number and second number then again the second number and the third number then third number and fourth number so every two sequential numbers have a difference constant difference of so this turns out to be an ap as well similarly in the third series minus 3 plus 1 gives me minus 2 this means this is the difference second number minus first difference is the number so the difference is this if I add plus 1 to the second number again, I get minus 1. If I add plus 1 to the number, uh, third number again, I get the 0 as fourth number. So on the basis of this information, I can define that my fifth number is going to be plus 4. Right? Is this clear? So this tells me the basic definition or basic uh, function of an APC. In all the list above, we said we see that successive terms are obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding terms. In all the list above, we see that successive terms are obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding term. This type of list, this type of series, this type of patterns are known as arithmetic progressions or AP. All right. This means that arithmetic progression is a list of numbers in which each term is obtained by adding a fixed number to the preceding term except the first term. The first term is something we have to define. All right. Also, we can find out the value of the first number if we know second or third number or something like that number and we know what the difference is. How? We'll see in the upcoming part. This fixed number, this fixed number which I have to add or subtract from the preceding term is known as the common difference of an AP. It can be positive, negative or zero. It can be anything. We saw all the examples in the previous slide that it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be positive, it can be zero. 
or again it can be negative minus 1 minus 0.5 is minus 5 minus 1.5 minus 0.5 is minus 2 minus 2 minus 0.5 is minus 2.5 all right so the first term in any arithmetic progression is denoted by a1 or a all right second term is denoted by a2 like this so nth term or term at the nth position can be defined as ax or an which is more common or more generally known or even this can be represented as en right the general form of an arithmetic progression is like this first term first term plus difference second first term plus twice of difference or second term plus difference first term plus thrice of difference or second term plus difference right Similarly, this will be my nth term. How we'll see the how we'll see how to derive the formula. So, if we know the situation of Mohit again, can we define the value of his salary in fifth year? Sure. The first year salary is eight thousand. So, adding the difference, I get my second year salary. Adding difference again to it. I get third year salary. Adding difference again to it, I get fourth year salary. Adding the common difference or the increment again to it, I get 10,000, which is going to be my fifth year salary. All right. Now let's see how to derive the formula of an nth term. So first term of an AP is written as A or I can write it as A plus 0 into B, right? Second term can be written as A2 or A plus D or I can write it as A plus 2 minus 1 into D. Similarly, if I go through this pattern, I can write this as A plus 1 minus 1 into D. Similarly, third term can be written as A3 is equal to A plus 2D, which is equal to A plus 3 minus 1 into D. Right? If you have any doubt anywhere, you can ask the, about the doubts in the comments of the QA section here. Alright? The fourth term is going to be A4 is equal to A plus 3D, which is equal to A plus 4 minus 1 into D. Now let's observe something here. I have A as my first term, alright, A1 basically, and I can represent it as A is equal to 1 minus 1 into right now if you think about it i can say that a1 can be represented as a plus 1 minus 1d similarly a2 could be represented as a plus 2 minus 1 into d right similarly a3 could be represented as a plus 3 minus 1 into d a4 we were able to represent it as a plus 4 minus 1 into d. Now if you think about it, what that means is that if I have a term at end position, I was able to represent it as a plus the position of the term minus 1 into d, right? a1 was written as a plus 1 minus 1 into d a2 was written as a plus 2 minus 1 into d. a3 was written as a plus 3 minus 1 into d. Similarly, a4 was written as a plus 4 minus 1 into d. If I generalize it as, let's say the position of the term be n, 
I can say that I could write it as a plus n minus 1 into b. This becomes the formula of nth term which is represented as a n or t n. Right? So if you have any doubt, ask me about, ask me about it in, right now. Then we are going to move to the formula of summation. So I don't think anyone has doubts as of now. Let's see the formula of summation as well here. So the formula of summation till n terms is written as n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into t, right? Where n is my number of terms, a is my first term, d is the common difference. Since I can represent this formula as a like this as well, where this is is equal to a n or t n, so I can write the formula of summation as n by two into a plus l, where l is represented as l which is equal to last term for an or tn. Now this is the formula of summation. We do not need to go into the derivation of this formula since that is not going to help us and it is not even required or needed anymore. Okay. So now let's get into questions. So this is a question uh, from the NCRT itself. It is an example in the NCRT. The question is, a sum of rupees 1000 is invested at 8% simple interest per year. I have to calculate the interest at the end of each year. Also, I have to find out if these interested form an AP. If they do form the AP, I have to find out the interest at the end of 30 years making use of this fact. Right. So I hope simple interest concepts are clear, but if they are not, simple interest is equal to T into R to T, right? where P is the principal amount. R is rate of rate of interest, sorry for my handwriting, t is equal to time period, right? So let's say after first year, p will be 1000, since this was the amount invested, this will be always be the p value, and this is the rate of interest, so it will be the r value. 
r is 8 and since it is only 1 here now p will be equal to 1. So the interest amount will be 80 rupees. So after first year I have an interest of 80 rupees only. After second year again since Since the value of simple interest, uh, sorry, sim uh, value of principal will be the same for every time as well as of the rate, I get 1000 into 8 into 2 upon 100. This comes out to be 160. Now, the difference between the simple interest after two years and the simple interest after one year is 80. So if I add 80 to the first year value, I get the simple interest of the second year. We are trying to find out if there is a pattern. Otherwise, see, to find an AP, I know that sequential terms should have a common difference. But how do we know that sequential terms have a common difference? By first figuring out the difference between second and first term and then verifying it with the difference between fourth and third term. Alright. So in the third year, simple interest will be 1000 into 8 into 3 since now the time period is 3 after 3 years. So we see again that if we add the value of 80 to the simple interest after 2 years, we get the simple interest after 3 years. This means that the simple interest after each year is in an AP. Where the definite where the essential values of AP are as follows. The first term of this AP or A is equal to 80. This value. Right? Common difference. or D is equal to 80 this value which is repeated and verified again so we have the AP where our first term is equal to 80 the common difference is equal to 80 as well now the question asked me that if I know this is an AP I know the basic terms of an AP I have to find out the interest after 30 years making use of this fact so interest after 30 years will be my A30 or the 30th term in this AP where 30 is equal to the N or the value of the position of the term. So A30 will be equal to A plus N minus 1 into D where N is equal to 30. So this will be equal to A80 plus 30 minus 1 into D80 and I will get 80 plus 29 into 80 right this will come out to be 80 plus 2320 and the answer will be 2400 so the interest after 30 years according to the AP we received will be equal to 2400 now since we are practicing here, what we will do is, we will verify this value. How? Using the formula of simple interest, where P is equal to 1000, right? R is equal to 8 and T is equal to 30. We calculate this and find out the value to come out to be 2400 which is equal to this value hence our answer was all right if you have any doubt in this ask me about it in the com in the comments right now in the live chat otherwise we'll move on to one more question
so those of us who have joined us right now they have the option to go back on the video and see the whole uh, whole trial again whole lesson again what i'll do is after finishing the stream i'll leave out the starting part or starting waiting part so that you don't have to do that in, if you would you watch it secondly you can also sign up at our link at the link mentioned in the live chat right now and we'll send you this whole video to you so that you can download it and and see it anytime you want all right we will send you the video in full hd quality even the better better quality than youtube and you'll be able to see it anytime you want you can share it so if you want that you can sign up uh, on the disc on the link in the live chat you can also mention who has referred you and they'll get additional 10% cash back if you buy something from our website all right So we'll be seeing uh, an advanced level question, you know, something which comes in exam is a hard question, and this question may at first seem to be something like that cannot come in a board's exam, but trust me, it can because it was a question in All India Paper of 2016, CBSE. All right. So let's see how to do this question. So the question is that I have a ratio of the sum of first n terms of two APs, all right? So let's say the first AP is S, the sum of first AP is S n one, and the sum of second AP is S n two. This is what I have been given. So some of you may have been thinking why we have advanced to such a you know high level question. The reason is that this is a trial class. You need to see what we can do here. All right. And also, you need to understand uh, how advanced questions are done because doing the advanced questions, ability to help you with advanced questions, basically kind of hallmarks and tells us, tells you about how detailed explanation we can give and how much we can help you also whoever has any doubt in this can ask me right now and you can subscribe on our website subscribe using our website for doubt support sessions so you can get doubt support sessions specialty specially doubt support sessions and nothing else for only 150 rupees for both maths and science and that will help you ask us any doubts about anything any concept any question any advanced question maybe you are preparing for coaching entrance exam or something like that any advanced question this will give you the ability to ask us any doubt for the whole time till march 31 or even 7 april if you need it all right let's see this question so this is what i have been given that sn1 upon s n 2 gives me 7 n plus 1 upon 4 n plus 27 all right now let's write the formula of s n 1 and s n 2 Here I have assumed that first term of the first AP is equal to A1. Common difference of first AP is D1. First term of the second AP is A2. Common difference of the second AP is D2. Alright. Now in this formula n by 2 and n by 2 is cut. Right. So I can say that 2A1 
plus n minus 1 d1 upon 2a2 plus n minus 1 d2 gives me 7n plus 1 upon 4n plus 27 right I have done nothing I have just cut this common term right now I can divide the whole LHS on numerator as well as denominator by 2 to get rid of this all right so I will get a1 plus n minus 1 by 2 d1 upon a2 plus n minus 1 d2 upon 2 this is equal to 7n plus 1 upon 4n plus d7 all right now one thing while doing these questions we have to keep in mind or you know keep on side that what is the thing we need to find out the value of so we need to find out the ratio of their mth terms all right this means i have to find out am1 upon am2 which is equal to a1 plus m minus 1 d1 a2 plus m minus 1 d2 now why i am saying that you need to keep this in mind or keep this in your side that you know you need to find you need to have this value you need to find out the value of this thing because if we have done that we'll know that i have got the value of a1 i have got a1 on the lhs numerator like i need it here i have got d1 in lhs numerator like i need it here Similarly, things are happening for denominator as well. Right? So, all I need is that n minus 1 by 2, this term, that this whole term is replaced by m minus 1, and things will be good for me. Right? I will be able to find out the values I need. So, we do the, just that. Substitute n minus 1 by 2 as m minus 1. Now, if we do that, we'll find out that n will have certain value in terms of n right because if we are substituting n minus 1 by 2 as m minus 1 which means this means that we are substituting actually we are substituting n with something what we are doing it with that is this so if we substitute the value of n is equal to 2m minus 1 n by 1 n minus 1 by 2 will become m plus 1 so if we do that on the denominator side on the lhs side basically we will be getting this right on the rhs side is where things get interesting so i had this on rhs side Right now, n has been replaced by 2m minus 1. So I can say that this is what RHS has become. Right. I have just replaced the value of n by n as 2 minus 1. Right? So I can say that a1 This a1 plus m minus 1 into t1 upon a2 plus m minus 1 into t2 becomes 7 into 2m minus 7 plus 1 upon 4 into 2m minus 4 plus 27. Right? 
So this is where things are right now. I can solve the RHS site. All right. When I solve this, I get first LHS will be written as A1 plus MS1 into D1 upon A2 plus M minus 1 D2. This becomes 14 M minus 7 plus 1 becomes 6 minus 6. This becomes 8 M minus 4 plus 27 becomes 23. Now, if we compare this with what we had to find out, right? Something we wrote in green above, right? We get that LHS is coming right like this only. If LHS is coming like this, this means LHS is equal to this, and hence RHS is equal to this. So this is what we needed to find out. This is the value of AM1 upon AM2. Alright. So if you have any doubt in this, ask me them right now in the live in the live chat. Alright, then we'll be doing one more question. So if no one has asked doubts, we'll be moving on to the last question of the session. All right. This is a question from optional exercise of NCRT book. The third question, the ladder question. I am very, very sure that most of you must have solved this question or tried this question once. Also, I'm very sure that most of you must have had doubt when they tried this question. All right. Now, this is the question. A ladder has trunks 25 centimeter apart. Trunks are basically the steps of a ladder, right? A ladder has rungs 25 centimeter apart. We have to, we can see the figure for this. The rungs decrease uniformly in length from 25 centimeter at the bottom, from 45 centimeter at the bottom. Trunks is width of the ladder, width of the strap, right? To 25 centimeter at the top. So basically, the top one is 25 centimeter, the bottom one is 45 centimeter. Now, 
the length of the ladder has been given as two and a half meter. So this is the length of the ladder, and each rung is twenty five centimeter apart. I have to find out the total wood required, total centimeter of wood required for the rungs. So first thing is I have to find out the number of rungs. Now the hint in the NCERT book says that the number of rungs is twenty five. Two fifty upon twenty-five. Well, there is one thing wrong about it. That NCERT has given you a hint, not an answer. So you need to understand that there is an information. Why? Let's see why. So this tells me that I have some rungs. I have the top rung here, then like this. And I have twenty-five centimeter distances here each time. So when you count, the distances have been counted ten times: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But there are eleven rounds: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This means that. Number of trunks is equal to two fifty upon twenty five plus one. This this is the number of trunks I have. All right. Now starting at the top, I can say that the trunks are in an AP. All right. As it has said that they are de they are decreasing uniformly in length. That means they are increasing uniformly in length from top to bottom. They must be in AP, otherwise uniformity cannot be made, right? So the first term of this AP is twenty-five. The last term of this AP is forty-five, and number of terms in this finite AP. Finite meaning I know the number of terms in this. The number of terms is not infinite. That means it's a finite AP. The number of terms in this finite AP is eleven. Now to figure out the value, I can do two things. Right? From here, I can go two ways. First, I can find out the value of d, since I have a n. I have a, and I have n. I can just use the equation of a n, which is a plus n minus one into d, where I have the value of a n and a n, and I can find out the value of d. After this, I can apply the formula of summon summation of n, which is equal to n by two to a plus n minus one into right. This is my first method. This is one way to do it, and it's absolutely correct. There is no problem with it. It will get you full marks. Let's see one more method, which is actually obviously the shorter and the smarter method. What this is, I have to I have the value of a, right? I have the value of a as twenty five. I have the value of a n or last term as forty five. Use I have the value of n as eleven. Using this information, without finding out the value of d, e, I can use the formula of S n n by two a plus l. So I have n, I have a, I have l. I do not need to find out the value of d for using this formula, and I can directly get the answer as this. This will be the word required to make out the all the eleven rungs in this ladder. Right. Obviously, this is correct as well. This will get you full marks, but this is correct as well, and this will get you full marks as well. And this is shorter math. All right. I hope you don't have any doubts. If you have, you can ask them. Ask me about them in the comments uh, of this video. You can email me at contact us at sarthayeducation dot com. You can ask me on WhatsApp on the number provided on the website. 
also i would love you love it if you guys can fill uh, the form uh, fill the google link given all right it will help you get access to exclusive discounts exclusive discounts of more than 50% site wide discounts and obviously talking from a value perspective getting a cloud package of of 150 rupees or getting a pa or getting the package of full support of math plus science with doubt support of 50 rupees is great they are mentioned as 300 and 500 respectively on the website but you can use the early bird discount coupon to get an instant discount if you want a higher discount or referral bonus you can uh, sign up on the form on the link given in the live in the chat right now or in the link given in the description that is gwo.gl slash gl f u d k this is the link you can use to get exclusive high value discount all right thank you for watching i hope we helped you and i hope we will see you guys in the doubt support packages or in any other packages thank you for watching have a great day take care and all the best for your preparation as well as exam